This episode is brought to you by the Slash and Cast Podcast Network. Learn more at slashandcast.net. Yeah, you call me two feet. I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3 b Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Time to take the three of us and uh, chop us up into a meat grinder and head into the jungles. <laughs> is that a reference? I don't get it. Oh, you motherfucker. He already is dropping the ball. That's right. This week, we are taking our shirts off and stretching all of our cords all around so we can do this podcast. Is that I'm a out, reference? I'm going to tr- bend a few trees all the way down to the ground for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> it's a it's a trapeze or something. But that's right, we're talking about 1987's Predator this week. Like the TV show with Chris Hansen? I'm going to kill that's you. How you. That's how you catch one. These guys, <laughs> these guys try to catch one, but only one of them can successfully catch one. Anybody can. You can go ahead and leave now. Police are already waiting outside. Anybody can catch one from me, if you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> catch these fucking hands. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, are you are you boy touch at 737? Yeah. It's time to die, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, touch me, I'm here. Wow, we went already down a weird fucking... What the, what the hell are you? Come on, do it. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. It's all bullshit. I thought you... <laughs> Thought you were a kid. It's all bullshit. All of it. <laughs> you set us up. <laughs> he knocks on his door. Knock, knock. Oh, fuck. We went down a ridiculous rabbit hole. We haven't even been going for two minutes. Um, I'm really excited to That's do remix this. That's Remix's fault. Yeah. That's I, all Remix's I fault. Don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You this is what we're talking about. We're talking about Chris Hansen's To Catch a Predator. Yeah. I think you're slightly misinformed. You didn't get the memo. Arnold Schwarzenegger's To Catch a Predator? Yes. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that every single night of the week. <laughs> right, it's like some Steven Seagal's Lawman, but it's Arnold Schwarzenegger catching pedophiles. <laughs> yeah. With his co-host, Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed up in a big red lizard suit. I'd rather have it be uh, Carl Weathers trying to keep it by the books. <laughs> Yeah, um, so so we uh, we put our clip-on ties on, and we're ready to... Uh, push some pencils. Yeah, push some pencils, discuss this flick. Um, but we did have a really... What is this fucking tie business? I, I don't know what the tie business is. That would imply that we're professional, and we are absolutely not. Although, something slightly professional has happened to the Deep Cut podcast, and I'm going to let Remix relay that message right now. That's right. Your boys over at 3B Video join the Slash and Cast Podcast Network. Check them out at placelocation.com <laughs> where you'll find us. You'll find them. You'll find others. You'll find them again. But most importantly, you'll find us. <laughs> How fast can you say Slash and Cast Podcast Network? Welcome, Internet fans, to the Slash and Cast Podcast Network. Whoa. <laughs> Slash and Cash. Schwagadash. How about Iris? Irish? Wristwatch. Wristwatch. Welcome, internet fans, to Irish Wristwatch. Can't say that one. <laughs> Irish Wristwatch channel. The wow. Swiss Army Wristwatch channel. Um, so that this podcast is fucking off the rails already. <laughs> you got to be on the rails to to be off them, right? I don't know if we're really on them. I was like, how hard would it be to th- to for three people to sit around and talk about Predator? And we've already fucked it up. <laughs> I think it's working fine. It's working swimmingly. So for those of you at home that are still listening, waiting for us to get into this, uh, I'm going to let Evil hit you with a brief plot synopsis, the best way that he can, all the way in the back room of 3B Video, and then we're going to dive into this action, horror, sci-fi masterpiece. All right, well, this is, uh, I would consider, the prequel to the film Commando starring uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, where John Matrix, previous life as Dutch, ran a group of mercenaries that is fooled to go into a jungle, they think, on a rescue mission, but it's more of a seek-and-destroy mission on behalf of the two-timing Carl Weathers. But he's still a good guy. But hold up, we're, we're doing this action film only for a little bit to lure in the muscleheads 
and then we're going to go straight up into a sci-fi slasher flick where an alien predator comes down and picks these mercs off one at a time. Coming down to a one-on-one -on -one showdown between the Predator, which was played by Kevin Peter Hall, also yes. known as Harry from Harry and the Hendersons, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, muscle man, man of the 80s, hero in a hearts, man of our dreams. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. I could have. You could have called it by its proper name. It's not an alien predator. It's an alien yokcha. Oh, now you're going to get all comic booky on us. The fuck's a yokcha? It's a yokcha. That's what the Yelp. alien race is called. That's what the predators. Yelpcha. Yelpcha. That's what the predators. Yelp. Uh, Yelpcha. Finally confirmed in canon is that there are female Yelpcha with breasts. Boo. <clears throat> Ooh. If this was a visual show, that definitely should be thrown up on the screen right now. Maybe that should be the thumbnail for uh, <laughs> clicking this is just a lady predator. Spread eagle like fucking hustler with her fucking dreadlock wolf puss. <laughs> nah, it would they have the, the mouth. As... Their puss would have the fucking mouth tendrils. Uh, okay, pussy face. Then, 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 I bet that's an ent entirely a game that's played on their home planet of, is it, is it the, which hole am I in here? Top or bottom? <laughs> they play 15 minutes, or mouth 5 minutes crotch. in heaven, where they grab a pull-up bar and fucking... All right, we're done with this. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> we get it, you just have vaginas. Yes, we're done. they have the vaginas. Um... But Evil, you, uh, I seriously couldn't have said it better myself. This is the movie that uh, I think started to turn people around on Arnold. You know, um, He was kind of seen as this just one-note, muscle-bound dude. And, and his career was kind of just kicking off. But this movie, he actually acts. And acts well. Like, becomes a real leading man in this movie. Yeah, and this is uh, entirely, I believe, kicked off and got greenlit because of the success of Alien. They're like, ah, I think this was kicking around for a while. They didn't quite have anywhere to go with it. And then once Alien hit and uh, hit big, they're like, well, we should probably go ahead and get this thing, off, this project off the ground finally. Mm -hmm. I got a couple. I got four words for you. First two, John McTiernan. Second two, Shane Black. That's why this movie is so fucking good. This had to have been super hard for Shane Black because it has nothing to do with Christmas. <laughs> Shane Black is the man. He knows how to write. He knows how to uh, make you feel for people. And that's one thing about this movie that uh, I even noticed as a kid. Is I mean, it is a muscle-bound meathead action horror. But you really, really like these characters very quickly. You know, they have, like, a very unique brotherhood about them. They don't fuck around. They get the job done, but they... Chemistry. Yeah, because they... They have chemistry. They've been through some shit. This podcast makes <laughs> Cambodia look like Kansas. I would love to see them do uh, prequels to this, where it's just straight up just... It's, an, it's just an action film. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like two movies of prequels of action films of these guys. The Expendables before The Expendables. Right, them just handling business on all these different crazy missions. Uh, give us a little bit more just on the Jess, Mac and Jesse. Just Jesse the Body Ventura. Just him with that minigun just liquefying guys. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> and maybe like Poncho or somebody's like, you know, after they're dead after the first probably two seconds of holding that trigger down. You can probably let up. You don't have to hold the trigger down for 22 seconds. <laughs> if you try doing it too quickly... It jams up every single time. You can't. You can't burst. So you gotta. You those gotta. Those two just... guys though that he. Those two guys that he just shoots the fucking shit out of. That after he kicks that door down, that is the funniest scene in the movie to me because those guys are dead within the first second, but he just keeps shooting them, <laughs> just blowing the hell out of everything in sight, chopping down fucking trees like gunners and trees and all types of shit. Um, <laughs> they really establish very quickly in the movie that this group of soldiers is not to be fucked with and that they, you know, there's, what is there? Seven of them. I, I forget the total number, but they take out a fucking base of baddies. Ninja quick, dude. Like uh, a rescue team, not assassins. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you pissed about the cover story. I knew I had to, whatever the fucking line of dialogue is, man, I dropped the ball on that one. Deep I know cut. I couldn't get you in here without the cover story. Yep. There it is. So that is the ultimate sidebar. 
to the beginning of the film is, like you said, they're a rescue team. They're not assassins. They handpick their missions, and they they will kill. They're good at killing, but it's not what they signed up for, I suppose. And then Dylan, which is an old colleague or old buddy of Arnold's, um, presents them with this mission. That son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they they cheated their way through high school together. Yeah, they had to. <laughs> Kyle, come on. What's the answer for number two? Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. What's the answer? <laughs> I knew you wouldn't study without me help. <laughs> oh, man. So so we, we thrust really quickly from an action film into sort of a suspense movie, and then we go full-blown slasher. I'm not really sure how this formula works so well, but man, does it work well. It transfers very nicely. It, it, it does the it does the unimaginable thing of lunking in nerds with, uh, with meatheads. Mm-hmm. It's the ultimate marriage between the two. That's true. Yeah, I never really thought of that. Uh, because, yeah, Shane, Shane Black, his writing style is so unique, and um, he definitely does give these each one of these characters their time to shine but like you said the way that it's written it it does kind of marry this um sci-fi nerd culture i don't want to call sci-fi fans nerds but hey man (laughs) and uh fuck your shit up the broppets right i calls them like i sees them (laughs) devil's rejects reference and cut and shane black is in the movie he plays hawkins the first guy that's uh, taken out of the team and man I'm glad he's the first one taken out because he's the most dead meat guy in the cast. Yeah, he absolutely is. He's not necessarily uh, a muscle bound dude. Like, yeah, like his shining scene with his gun is like, and then Billy has to come in and like, no, you do this, throw a fucking grenade at mm-hmm. it. Yeah, because he's so, Hawkins. You just fuck shit up. You're dead weight. And you tell piss poor jokes. <laughs> Hawkins is running around with an MP5 in the fucking jungle. Like, get the fuck out of here. Everybody else has got badass guns, and you got this little bitch-ass MP5. Yeah, this isn't this isn't like the SWAT team of the local precinct, man. <laughs> We're in the goddamn jungle. Right. Colombian drug lords. You gonna put a silencer on that shit, too? <laughs> Pussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Ventura said. He looked at his gun, looked at his gun, and... Fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> And spit right in Hawkins' face. Which, uh, you've probably already noticed that we cannot stop quoting this movie. I think, in the history of 3B Video, in the history of you and I being friends, there is not one movie that is quoted more than the original Predator. Um, I think I quote it on a daily basis, and sometimes I don't even mean to. Offer, offering somebody like, would you like a drink? Would you like a drink? No. Bunch of slack jaw faggots around here. <laughs> This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Just like yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, I throw that out all the time. <laughs> I'd love to see I'd love to see if you were like just around the house just shaving <laughs> with a bick. Stop shaving. Like, you don't have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a terrible idea. Like a shaving like that in the in a random jungle with all kinds of bacteria and shit. Just getting into an open wound on your what face. What kind of bacteria a terrible can you idea. get in a, in a jungle <laughs> remix? Dude, literally all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You thought botulism came from a can, motherfucker. You've never been to Cambodia. Right. <laughs> you get, you know, bat piss inside your fucking open wound on your face or whatever. Like That's how zombies that's, happen. Yeah, that's true. That, you know. That's another story of where Predator could go. Mac, Mac, what's wrong with you? Why you want the brains? <laughs> Why you keep saying brains? So the the cast of these soldiers is kind of a like a who's who of '80s action. You know, like we we already talked about it a little bit, but obviously you have Schwarzenegger, you have Jesse the Body Ventura, you have uh, why am I blanking on his name? The uh, Sunny Land. Yeah, from Lock Up and stuff. Um, the dude who had is a dude who had security guards, not for his protection, but for everyone else's protection. That's like that's like some shit that uh, you would hear on wrestling. You know what I mean? Like that's some seems like it seems like it's fabricated, but um, 
then you look at him and you're like, oh yeah, I could totally believe this guy's like a wild animal they brought on set. And don't get too close to Sonny. He hasn't eaten yet. Right. He's a big motherfucker too, dude. Um, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about him being so big and imposing and then us not getting a payoff death scene with him? I feel like that was his entire audition too. He just went into the audition and just took his shirt off and just sliced his own chest open with a big ass machete. <laughs> They're like, "This guy is hired. <laughs> I'm scared of him. He's hired." Like, he, like not even an audition. He's just there to like fix fix like the plumbing or something. He's just there on an odd, you know, coincidence <laughs> kind of thing. And slicing his chest open, walking down the hallway. Yeah. All right. Just staring, yeah, it is. Yeah, he's not even using a knife. He's using a fucking, like, a plunger. And I'm like, how's he cutting himself with a plunger? <laughs> I, I'm okay with it. It doesn't, the only thing that bothers me is it doesn't even look like him when his uh, corpse is thrown on that tree a few seconds later. That sliced up corpse that just face plants on the side of a tree. And I'm like, who the hell is that? It is. I think my dad or my mom was like, that's that's Sonny Landham. I was like, doesn't even fucking look like him. It looks like some just regular ass jabroni. That just had the misfortune of crossing the Predator. I feel like he just sliced off Sonny Landham's head and knocked him over the cliff. That would have been a more acceptable death. When I was a kid, uh, I was always confused with that as well. And I always thought, for like a brief for like a brief second, I always thought it was the girl, the hostage. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, when did that happen? You know. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Where's Anna? Anna, where are you? <laughs> Give me the weapon! <laughs> Sorry, I screamed that real loud. See, I can't I can't talk about this movie without just that. quoting it constantly. I love that little short on YouTube that how it should have ended with Predator and they're like, they're like he didn't kill you because you weren't armed. And then Sonny Land was like, well, why are we carrying all these weapons in? Just throw them on the ground. Mm. I haven't seen that. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, they just throw all the guns on the ground. And they're like, we're just going to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Predator tries to hand him a machine gun and Arnold's like, nah, you keep Yeah, it. we're good, man. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been a whole different movie if he would have just went toe-to-toe with everybody like he does with Arnold at the end of the movie. He'd be wicked tired after fucking (laughs) fist-fighting eight or nine Oh, yeah. I think Bill Duke would surprise the shit out of him in a street fight. I think Bill Duke would fuck him up worse than he thinks thinks that he would from looking at him. This Green Beret is going to kick your ass. Luckily, only Dutch eats Green Berets for breakfast. Right. (laughs) Predator doesn't eat them. He just rips out their fucking skull and spinal column and hangs them on his is, wall is that a thing remix do we ever figure out what the fuck what do predators eat that's a good question they have those like needles that they inject themselves with i don't know if that's got some sort of like protein or sustenance in it i just always assumed that yeah. that was their like med kit you right know? it is their med or kit in the video games at least but in the predators movie don't they have like roasted animals over a spit um uh, I don't know, man. It's been a hot minute since I've seen Predators. I would. I've seen that movie exactly one time, and I wasn't necessarily paying the greatest of attention to it when it was on. I would assume that they've got some sort of like space food equivalent versus what they actually keep on their home planet. Space food equivalent. Hashtag space food space. equivalent. <laughs> like space ice cream. Like, like that. Like that. Uh, space ice cream that you can get like like at the novelty shops. Like that. <laughs> dry ass ice cream that melts when you put it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. That's funny. You said that the same time that remix said like space ice cream. <laughs> so like space ice cream. I'd like to think that I'd like to go with the other one that they're just like heroin addicts. <laughs> and that's why like they're not getting dropped off on this planet for, you know, no, uh, noble purposes. Or it's like this fucking guy keeps screwing up and we're tired of his junky ass. <laughs> drop him off. Drop him off in the jungles of Mexico. Right, get rid of Steve. He fucking sucks. <laughs> AVP Central has an article on Yaucha eating habits. The Yaucha are carnivorous creatures that enjoy eating raw meat during their hunts. However, when they have more spare time on their ship, they will enjoy ceremonial or cooked foods. Hmm. So yeah, they're probably just fucking eating everything that they fucking see in the jungle because they're so goddamn tiny. Do you think at any point that this predator was mowing down on these mercs after he killed them. I mean, that's probably how he gets all the flesh off. That's how he probably gets to the fucking bones, bruh. He st- I know he steams them or whatever, <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> you think that's what happened to <laughs> to to Hopper's unit? He just They were all murdered and eaten, and that's what was left? That, that's his leftovers? Hundo P, dude. Hanging from the trees? Hundo wow. P, dude. That's... I, you know, 
as a as a kid, I never thought of that, and I'm, I guess as an adult, I never thought of that. So now that you bring that up, I'm like, yeah, maybe like he doesn't like the skin, so he's peeled off all the fucking skin because <laughs> there's it's the equivalent of crust on a sandwich, right? In the Predator, but... the new one, the Predator eats a person. Hmm. That someone doesn't mind crust on their sandwich. <laughs> This must be like an adolescent predator. Is like, can you know, can I have six humans, no skin? Please? Right. <laughs> can I have six Franks from Hellraiser? Skinless Franks, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, yeah. Now my brain is like just racing with all the. <laughs> that makes sense. Holy fuck! Uh, that totally makes sense with Predator Two. Why? Well, one, he's hiding in the meatpacking place because it's cold. It's cool. And uh, people can't track him there. But two, it's filled with raw meat. Wow. Okay. There you go. He's like, what? Jackpot. Staying here. <laughs> <laughs> My job is done. Yep. <laughs> I can stay out in this concrete heat wave where I can be c- cool and comfortable in this room full of fucking food. And then Gary Busey comes and tries to fuck it up. <laughs> Who doesn't want to live in their refrigerator in the dead of summer? <laughs> That's true. That's a Simpsons reference. Deep cut. <laughs> We're just going to live in the refrigerator. <laughs> I forget the line, but you know what I'm talking about. They put the tent up. Yeah, I, I'd like just, yeah, I just watched that one recently, too, and I can't remember <laughs> what the lines are exactly, but I always thought that was a great idea. Let's just hook this thing up to the fridge and just hand over frozen peas and just, ah, uh, <laughs> like it's a bar of soap. <laughs> in one of the comics, a Cajun... Dude makes gumbo out of a fucking predator. What do you think predator meat tastes like? Oh, like t- probably, ugh, it's probably like gator meat. Probably like really super greasy. Mm. Oof. I like gator meat, but I feel like yeah, something like a turtle. They kind of have that same kind of like leathery. I guess yeah, even like a like a gator, like kind of a leathery skin, spotty leathery, thick tough skin. So maybe. Would that be good for a gumbo? Mm. I wonder if Predator is yeah. spicy, or if you got to add spice to it. Cajun seasoning. Bunch of lime. You think Predator meat is naturally spicy? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, is Predator meat naturally spicy? Alien meat's probably... It's like a Slim Jim. <laughs> that would be the greatest fucking thing ever. Why didn't Macho Man ever fucking star in one of these movies? Because <laughs> he was too high on coke. Man. Bite off his finger, it tastes like a Slim Jim. Uh, Macho Man in the Predator movies would he would be the character that's like why did we bring this guy <laughs> this guy is not cool but someone and no one has the nerve to be like nah he's cool because you can clearly see he's not right he's just walking around shaking out the fucking steroid injection just fucking pulling out coffee creamer all yeah. over the like they're trying to like they're trying to set traps and shit when they just they determine that the predator is moving through the trees. Macho Man would just be shaking every tree going, come on, are you in there, Predator? Come on down. Man up and face me. I want to see Macho Man and Predator 2 fucking table slam the fucking Predator. <laughs> Uppercut him through a punch bowl. All right, Evil. Uh, for the people at home who just heard your Macho Man, can you give me a Macho Man line reading of OK Pussy Face from Predator 2? <laughs> OK Pussy Face. Peace. <laughs> it's your move. <laughs> Want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Macho Man definitely wanted some nose candy. Um, well, he should. You get out of here! Get out of here, Harrigan! I'm gonna save your ass. <laughs> this is between me and him. <laughs> Uh, so for the people who are new who have discovered us, you will find, obviously, that uh, when we say we're going to talk about a movie, that encompasses we talk about all movie. things, <laughs> and we don't ever really stick to the script, we just kind of loosely discuss all the fun, and uh, it's never it's never really going to stay on task, that's just the way that it is. <laughs> Because assuming everyone has seen the movie, mm-hmm. so this is like what your conversation would be like when you're watching this movie, have this movie on in the background, and a bunch of friends are over, and you're like, the fuck you think he eats? Yep, absolutely. Muskrats. He does shoot at a, a possum, right? Or is it a muskrat? I always thought it was just a rat, and I was like, oh, I guess it is bigger than a big old, rat. Big old rat. Um, speaking of big, dude. 
sometimes two five, two, two, five kilos. Um, I'm not sure how tall Arnold Schwarzenegger is. I don't have that information directly in front of me, but let's talk about Kevin Peter Hall. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a big dude. Um, sidebar, I know you did mention he was Harry from Harry and the Hendersons, but he's also the alien in the Graydon Clark movie Without Warning, which is basically Predator without a budget and starring Martin Landau. Um, super rad and Jack Palance even, but, um, man, does Kevin Peter Hall play the best predator that we've ever had on screen. And this was 1987. And I talk about this all the time. I don't understand how they made a movie in 1987, got the look perfect, got the, the actor who did it perfect and they cannot duplicate it. Here we are X amount of years later. And every time you see a predator on screen, it's, so underwhelming compared to Kevin Peter Hall's Predator. Yeah, every Predator is like, yep, there's a Predator. But when he, in that first one, he takes his mask off and he's inching towards Arnold. That's a shit your pants moment. If you put yourself in Arnold's boots, I'm like, uh, yeah, 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 I, I don't hate to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, and that makeup effects, that's Stan Winston, right? Is that who is responsible? Yeah, I believe so, there's your there's your there's your cocktail of the perfect ingredients, Kevin Peter Hall and Stan Winston on the effects. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks so real. It looks so organic. It's like slimy. It it feels like it's a real thing. Like you look at that costume, and for the life of me, I can't. Like you know when you see like the Ninja Turtles, and Jim Henson is the man, and the first Ninja Turtles movie is amazing. But once you realize that the actors. Uh, are seeing through slits that are underneath the bandanas. You can't unsee that. Now, when I look at that first Predator design, I cannot, for the life of me, see any imperfections. I see no spots where I'm like, ah, the actor sees out of this, or, oh, I see a seam, I see that it's fake in any way, shape, or form. So you want to know how tall Arnold is? 6'2". Mm-hmm. 6'2", two. Six two, yep. So he's about an inch taller than me. Mm. Oof. 6'2". Mr. Universe, which goes to show you exactly how big Kevin Peter Hall is. Was he like seven foot one? Predator is seven foot. Seven foot. Yeah, Kevin Peter Hall was wicked tall, and he was not like a buff dude by any means, but in that suit, he is intimidating. Like, he makes Arnold look like a little bitch. And he has like a tragic, like, uh, death story. Didn't he, like, like accidentally get, like, mixed, something mixed up and got HIV? Ended up dying from it from some kind of just weird mishap or something. I want to. I want to remember. He get. He got easy eed. I'm not sure how he passed away. I knew he passed away young, but I wasn't sure. We looked it up one time when we were watching, I believe, Predator, and I think the wife, what's up, Pam, looked up the uh, circumstances behind his death, and I think it's like a super like tragic, like oh my gosh, mm. cut way too short. Yeah. Because he's an incredible uh, costume actor. Yeah, he he was definitely like our Doug Jones before Doug Jones, you know. Filled some <laughs> big shoes, you know. Harry and the Hendersons. He's a big foot. Yeah, a big foot. <laughs> but um, he he kills it in that role. This does that standard slasher thing where we don't ever really get a clear look at the villain. Until we're about three fourths of the way through with the film. Yeah, he's in camo the entire. He's in that camouflage the entire movie, pretty much. Right, and that's you know like the early Friday the Thirteenth films, like up to five. It's like seeing a weapon, seeing a person react, they're dead, and then it's not till that final act where you get that payoff of now, here's your Jason or your Roy. You know, it's like the it's the Jaws formula. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to see it too much and. Um, that first movie is a perfect cocktail of keeping the Predator off screen for as long as possible so that when you do see him, you're like, oh, these guys are in trouble. Like, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. And, man, what an effective, like, every time you like, get to see a glimpse of him in the, uh, like, 45 minutes leading up to that in in, in the confrontation is just, like, just glimpses here and there of, like, his leg his hands Mm -hmm. a quick shot of him in a tree before it goes away again right so how there's something in those trees it ain't no man so how do you guys feel about dylan's kind of redemption in the film 
You know, I mean, I, I don't know how you guys feel about Dylan. Uh, I I love Carl Weathers, so it's hard for me to see him as a bad guy, even though clearly he's he's kind of a scum fuck. But then there's like a turning point in the movie for me where you're like, ah, he's he's just as fucked as the rest of them. So he kind of by default you start rooting for him because he's one of them. I love when Action Jackson loses his arm and it's still just firing a machine gun on the ground. <laughs> that's just that's just fantastic. And he's still not giving up after even after having a an arm sliced off. He's still gonna try to take this thing on. Mm-hmm. Carl Weathers is my shit. Yeah, dude. Carl Weathers is the truth. Um, and and I don't know that you could put anybody else in that role and have it as effective because he's he's so likable. You know, even like like I said, even though he's a piece of shit, he's so like, man, he's he is charismatic as fuck. And putting him with Arnold, you know, um, Arnold is definitely learning the ropes of acting, I think, from Car- Carl Weathers, because Carl Weathers has such a, a range. He's been in action stuff. He's been in drama stuff and sports stuff and yada yada. But um, I, I just like every time they're on screen together, they really... Um, bring out the best of each other. Uh, I had been told a story. I was curious if you had heard it and what you think. That I've heard that uh, uh, Schwarzenegger played jokes on other cast members, and one of those jokes was apparently taking Ventura's wardrobe and shrinking it on him. So when he goes to put everything on, everything's super tight, and he starts giving him shit like, Jesse, what's wrong? You're getting fat. None of your, none of your, fit, none of your clothes fit. What's going on? <laughs> oh, that sounds like something Arnold would do. I know that... They had like a trailer brought to the fucking shooting location that they filled with. They, they yeah, yeah. created their own gym, and so a bunch of them would. It was just weird that you'd be sweating your ass off in the fucking jungles of Mexico. They're like, let's go work out now. They would they would get up at like four in the morning so they could get a good pump so they would look good on camera. And uh, Shane Black said he did that for like the first three days, and then he was like. Eh, I'm just going to go to the set. Like, <laughs> you know, because he never is, like, flexing or, or showing off how buff he is in the movie. So Because he's not. Right. Poncho is bigger than him. Poncho is kind of jacked, dude. Like, for a little guy, he's, you know. Packs a big punch. Mm-hmm. How do you, uh, how do you feel about Max? Because uh, I think he does it, it tremendously well, uh, dealing with Ventura's character's death mm. and how it affects him. That's one of those things in this movie as far as character development goes, you know, and that's why you, we go f- kind of full circle to you saying you would love to see a, uh, a prequel so we could get a little bit more of their relationship. But from the second they step off of the helicopter, they, they exit the helicopter together, basically. Like you, you can see the camaraderie right off the jump. And then when they land in the jungle, the way that they interact, you can tell that they're really good friends. And, um, it's a, I think it's a very believable performance because, you know, he's he's mourning the loss of him and he's sitting out there with him with the moonlight and telling stories and it just, it feels very real. It feels very, like, lived in. Like, they were buddies before filming, maybe. I'm, I'm, I don't know if they were, but um, it's a extremely believable performance. Yeah, and I, I, I go with his descent into madness where he's just going off the deep end at, during his final, you know, run where he faces off with the Predator where he's just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to die trying to kill this thing. I know it. Bye. Mm-hmm. I also like uh, when he thinks he's got the Predator and he kills that big fucking wild boar. <laughs> and then that's another moment of like it's it's terrifying but then the levity kicks in immediately when fucking Sonny is laughing at him <laughs> you think you could have found something bigger right? shut the fuck up <laughs> fuck you yeah how do you like their wardrobe also when they're coming off that chopper you mentioned them when they're introduced coming off that plane and fucking Arnold comes off that chopper looking like a target executive <laughs> I like that Sonny's outfit looks like uh, Travolta's from like Saturday Night Fever like, <laughs> like the the big fucking collar and shit. Yeah. Maybe they were... Venture is wearing his uh, MTV t-shirt. Mm-hmm. I, I think, like, maybe they had just finished a mission, you know, so they were all at home, and then they get called in. So they're all, they're all kind of getting dragged <laughs> like in. That's, 
That's their at home clothes. That's their lounging attire. Yeah. Don't you think like Sonny would be, you know, sitting on like a suede couch in that fucking leisure suit, Larry style suit with got his legs crossed. Sonny Landon, I feel, is the type of guy that would answer the door naked and make you feel like the asshole for knocking on the door. <laughs> That's what Remix does to me all the time. Showed up when I was <laughs> least expecting it. No, I wasn't going to fucking get dressed just to fucking give you a fucking USB stick. <laughs> he, he answers his door in like this U Hefner-esque fucking robe. Like, all, <laughs> only thing missing would have been if he would have had like a pipe in his mouth. Like, miss, miss, here's your USB. I have gratuitous amounts of women at my beck and call at my home. <laughs> where was the where was the USB drive? Was it already in his hand, or did he pull that from, from inside the robe? I don't remember. It has pockets. His robe has pockets. There's, there's the answer. Internal or external pockets? That is the real question. <laughs> that, is, that is my question. I have an internal pocket. <laughs> I think we prison all have wallet. a built-in internal pocket. The prison wallet? Is that what you called it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, we're... That's where you keep watches. <laughs> so, Remix, if you had to pick one character other than Arnold, who's your favorite in this movie? Fucking Dylan, bruh. <laughs> Super swole, man. I love that. It's... I don't... I... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm, I'm sorry, trying, what? To, trying to say here. Um, the scene when they are pulling the tree down and they have their shirts off. I have this weird like infatuation with that scene where I'm like, if I could have any body type in the world, I would want Carl Weathers' body type. Like, he, he looks like a He-Man figure, right? He doesn't. He only has abs when he like is taking a deep breath in. He's just a thick, muscle-bound dude. But like when he's breathing heavy. It carves out like a big old thick four pack, and I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see an interview with you and Carl Weather, like when you're breathing, and then I can see like your abs when you're breathing. That's awesome. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I need you to breathe real hard for me, sir. Yeah, take your shirt off and breathe for me. I bet like you're giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> I I bet Carl Weathers still has abs like that. I think he's just ready in case they're like, let's do a Predator reunion. He's still swole as fuck. Just ready to go. Adam Sandler probably asked him to do that shit on the set of Happy Gilmore. We're like, can you take your shirt off and breathe? I want to see those abs. <laughs> I forgot he was in that movie. Oh, God. Give a little tap, tap, tappy. Uh, yeah, Happy Gilmore reference. Deep cut. You forgot he was, you forgot he was Chubbs. <laughs> he's missing a hand. He took his hand. Yeah, he fought a gator and took his eye out and kept it. <laughs> Uh, you see, this conversation about this movie has went in a million different directions, but we did we did hit the 40-minute mark. We did indeed. Which means it's time for another little segment we like to do called The Game. No. What game? It's, it's the one star. Oh, well, you're right. Hey, it. Cut the music. One star is for Predator. Now, this is one that came up a bunch. Everyone complaining that this is not a steelbook version. <laughs> Kevin John is one of those guys. One star. This is not a steelbook. <laughs> the movie is great. The movie is great. Love the movie. Not a steelbook. <laughs> one star. Uh, your fault. You ordered the wrong version. And another staple that's uh, always a welcomed one around here that we get all the time from Jake Z. One star. I did not order this. <laughs> Someone hacked my account. <laughs> <laughs> Those are probably my favorite. Yeah, I do love that. Like, first of all, what's the what's the old adage? You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. If you didn't fucking order it, and you just wake up and there's a box on your porch with fucking predator in it, you say thank you. You don't say I'm angry. You take your copy of Predator and fucking love it. I think I accidentally own this fucking movie on, like, four different formats. <laughs> That's not an accident, baby. I just keep I have getting an, it. I have an unopened Predator VHS in my possession. I'm holding a very much so open VHS copy of Predator at the moment. That's Do a my... little tappy tap tap. Aww. Uh... Hold that up again. I thought that, that looked like Predator 2. That was Predator 2. I 
I'm holding oh, both of them. There it is. I was tapping there on Predator it is. One. Sight gags. Uh, you can't fool me there, <laughs> Yes, I held up Predator Two to the camera, but Predator One was on the backside. All right, next up we got John. One star. Bad. <laughs> but wow. Didn't remember this film had such bad language. Oh. Threw it out. Wow. Jesus. I'm I'm offended at the uh, use of the f words. Not offended at the fucking predator ripping through people. He called that man a son of a bitch. <laughs> well, gold darned it. Gold darn it. They can't call that man a son of a bitch. That's that's rude. Is that the uh, groundskeeper Willie impression? Yeah, uh, grease me up, grease woman. <laughs> Launch <Lunch laughs> women. Grease me up, grease woman. Is that what <laughs> Lunch <laughs> lady. <laughs> <laughs> grease me up, grease woman. Grease me up, grease woman. I'm getting that tattooed on my forearm. Uh, but you do it. Greasy ass, greasy ass Willie with no shirt on. <laughs> grease me up, the grease woman. I'm from North Kilton. <laughs> I'm from North Kilton too. <laughs> you motherfuckers are killing me. It's too early for the fucking ground. There's no Saint John in North Kilton. I'm only pulling your leg. Yeah, because I speak to me. Hello. <laughs> oh, we went off the fucking. Yeah, deep where end. the fuck is this podcast? <clears throat> Had to cough. Whoa, you got COVID. the shinin. Want to get sued? Your final one is from Bedek. Bedek. <laughs> <laughs> That's a noise a fucking bird makes. That ain't a fucking Bidak. name. That's the guy's name. Bedek. <laughs> One star. You ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> I don't think we're ready. Blippity! <laughs> Blippity? B L P P P T Y. <laughs> that, that may be our first one star butt dial. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody. Oh. One star. Blippity! <laughs> yep, I'm getting that actual one star review printed out and put on a fucking sticker. <laughs> or a shirt, one or the other. Um, so that was Evil's one star reviews of 1987. Tough to find some for this movie. Yeah, you know, uh, it They're is tough to find. It's a it's a classic. It's a highly regarded film. So I can totally see that. But uh, that last one takes the it was cake. Probably it was probably like 70 people bitching about the steel book being the picture and not wah, the actual movie. So I put one in there, but that's what 99% of the one stars were about. Were you were about that it wasn't a steel book. Cry baby bastards. Well, now that we're done with the one star review segment, I think it's time to play the game. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game. We're playing the prop game. I think it's Roger's turn to explain it. I like Roger's explanation of the game. All right. If I, if so, Roger. Tell me about the game and how you to play it. Who is it playing it? Who is it playing it? Play it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the explanation is quite simple uh, if you're new here. What we do is we pick a prop from the movie that we're discussing. Can't be a super obvious prop. So you can't be like, well, I want the Predator's mask. I want... Jesse Ventura's gun. That's super fucking obvious, so you got to do something that is a deep cut in and of itself. So that's how we do it. We encourage you all to pick a prop from the movie as well. Yes. So who wants to start? Who wants to be the first one to pick their prop from the Predator? I'll go last because I have the deepest of cuts. If I got to pick something from this movie, which is littered with amazing things that we would all want to have in our houses... It's a, it's a really tough decision, and I actually spent some time last night thinking about it. So, if I wanted to bring something home from the movie that could just hang out and be a little deep cut on the shelf, I'm going to have to go with Dylan's lighter. I, I think that's a, a neat little touch that only a handful of people would see and be like, fuck, dude, that's from Predator, that's rad. So, of course, i got to go with that. Plus... It's that whole Carl Weathers and Dutch dynamic, so gotta have it. <laughs> pretty good. That is pretty good. 
I would take Arnold's torch that he yells and holds up in the air when he throws it into the fire during the final confrontation. I just want a charred chunk of wood with Arnold's picture next to it. <laughs> Push a button. <laughs> yeah, whenever you're feeling festive, you light it for a couple minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Carry it around like a big sage incense or whatever. This house is clear. <laughs> Just fucking charring the walls as you walk through. I want Dutch's totally not combat-ready fucking pants. <laughs> They're just fucking cargo pants that you buy at fucking Walmart that have camo print on them. <laughs> you don't need to take Dutch's, you can go to Walmart. Yeah, but... Like, these are Dutch's pants from, from Predator. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, the, the ignore the fucking Walmart tag on them. Uh, I totally follow an Instagram page that is, uh... Schwarzenegger film props and the dude has a massive collection of Arnold Schwarzenegger film props and he very well might have those pants from Predator so I might have to take a little deep dive detour and uh, see and maybe he'll sell them to you yeah I think if it's for a hot minute you're gonna be like I know a page called Schwarzenegger (laughs) pants And I'm going to hook you up with it, because I'm pretty sure you could probably put a bid in to buy those those camo pants. <laughs> Hashtag Schwarzenegger pants. Or he makes replica Schwarzenegger pants. Like These look identical to what he wore in Predator before and after the mud bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I just want a five-gallon bucket of the fucking mud that he smears all over himself. I was going to say I want a handful of that mud. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Those stupid fucking cargo pants. Maybe that's where my fascination with wearing those all the time came from, is he made it look really cool. (laughs) Well, Arnold can make anything look cool, man. He makes owning a donkey inside of his his million-dollar home look (laughs) like a good idea. Lulu the donkey forever. (laughs) Lulu. Lulu is hungry. Come here, Lulu. (laughs) You feed the carrots. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, that's a terrible idea, but he but he presents it as like, you know, that would be fucking cool. We should do that, too. It's <laughs> just fucking chewing on the corner of the TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Lulu, I just bought that TV. Come on. I didn't even get the two-year warranty. What are you doing? Electrocuting Lulu. Uh, that's a movie title right there. Or it's a, a punk band name. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so there you have the prop game, which is how we like to end these podcasts. Um, with a little bit of food for thought. So now that you've listened to us, maybe you're going to sit at home and think about something weird that you would like to take from this movie. And uh, hopefully, now every movie you watch, you're thinking of little weird deep cuts of things from those movies you would like to own. Never really talked about uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's inclusion in this project. That's because he doesn't exist. <laughs> it's because he doesn't exist in this movie. Because he, he came on set, went, it's hot out here, and then went home. And got replaced by Kevin motherfucking Peter Hall, so... And that suit wouldn't fit Kevin Peter Hall, either. Slowly, more and more pictures of the original suit have been leaking, and I found one recently that's very intriguing. I would encourage you, if you don't know about it, to look up the 1987 Predator <laughs> film with Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know what you should do, Remix? You should post that photo in our Discord. I put a gif in there that looked like the Patterson-Gimley footage. Right. Where he's, like, walking just like the Bigfoot. And like, Ugh, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the neck's all bobbling, all fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, it, like he has no, like, there's no head. Like, the, the two feet on top of where the alien head is. <laughs> so if you're new to this podcast, guys, and you haven't uh, found us on all of our social medias, we do have a Facebook. We have a Discord. What else am I trying to think of? YouTube. Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we have Instagram. Uh, at Rotten Roger DeMarco or at Evil Dead Inks. We have our YouTube channel, um, which if you follow us on YouTube, you will be able to get to our Discord via descriptions of videos and all of that hoopla. We post a lot of fun links stuff. Links and shit. Yes, we post a lot of fun stuff. A lot of Finding it, links and shit. A lot of behind the scenes stuff from when we're working on podcasts or videos, um, horror movie nude scenes and things like that. So. If you haven't joined our community, you should definitely do that so we can interact with you on a daily basis. Or you can, you know, join it and just lurk like some some people do. That's fine, too. Mm. There's nothing wrong. Like approximately 87 people do. (laughs) There's a lot of lurking going on. Or they just don't ever open it. They're like, yeah, we'll join it, and then they never look at it again. (laughs) Pumping those numbers up. It happens, guys. Um, But on that note, there's a lot of movies out there, and somebody's got to watch them. 
So why not us? Right? My God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lulu. Happy birthday to you. Look at this. Huh? Are we not celebrating birthday really great, huh? The way the candles are unnecessary here. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's another one. Oh, yeah. Here's another one, a crumb. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there we have it. Mm -hmm. Not so loud, okay? Oh, look at the jealous one is coming in. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a good birthday. The day you're one year old. You're one year old today. Congratulations. You're such a beautiful girl. You're a beautiful girl.